Hello, nutrition people. I know I said I was going to do it tomorrow, but I was on a roll with working and, um, you know, I got the COVID and the uh, flu, COVID booster and the flu shot, and it's making me hyper. So I said, well, might as well take advantage of this energy. So here I am uh, doing a little micro learning for this week six. Can you believe it? We are week six and almost done. Um, two weeks left. Um, I have to say I was very impressed with everyone's uh, recordings uh, on their uh, PowerPoint presentation group project. And um, I loved everything about every single diet. And um, out of all of them, I pretty much have done the ketogenic diet and it does work very well. Um, but I will have to say this, I was on it for a while and I always was gloating that um, because I'm an athlete, I was always gloating that I had low cholesterol, um, but uh, I stayed on it a bit too long for about a year and my cholesterol went up. So that's one thing that you should know about the ketogenic diet. And I did lose uh, 10 pounds like that. So um, just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, and I also want to share that as a type O, um, I was interested in the uh, blood type and the specific diet for, for that blood type. And uh, iron deficiency, vegetarian is not the way to go, apparently. So thank you all for those wonderful presentations. You were quite articulate and dynamic, and I loved the slides. So with that said, I am now going on to this week's topic. Um, so there's, you know, nutrition throughout the ages. So, we, you know, we can talk about childhood as well, but uh, for the purposes of this lecture, I'm just going to go through the adult years, um, skim through the early, but definitely go through the middle and the later years, because you will be seeing a lot of those kind of patients um, if you're working in the medical field. Um, so elderly patients have very specific uh, nutritional requirements. So um, the process of aging um, through the adult years requires different um, types of nutrients because A, we start to lose specific enzymes, our um, telomeres, which are, um, we have um, specific gene sequences that get deleted as we age. And so uh, a typical example of that would be, um, let's say lactase. Uh, the enzyme lactase is an enzyme that helps you break down lactose, which is found in milk. It's the sugar found in milk. But as we age, um, that process uh, disappears. And by the mid thirties, some people become lactose intolerant. So that's a perfect exam example of what gradual aging can do. Um, it reflects, how um, each decade we need to change our diet and increase our supplementation accordingly. Now, we also um, are beholden to our genetics and some people are uh, genetically prone to get high cholesterol. So you have to adjust for that specific type of diet or if there's a history of diabetes then you have to make sure that um, you know, you're not going to uh, move into that hyperglycemic state and keep stress levels low, cortisol levels low, um, exercise high, and probably the ketogenic, the low carb diet. So let's go on and um, discuss that as the um, uh, population and age distribution changes, America is aging. Um, so we need to, as uh, medical practitioners, whether you're a nurse or a doctor, understand that as we age, we have different expectations of what we should be putting into our system, our digestive system. Now with the um, increase in technology and the quality of life, our life expectancy has gone up believe it or not. Now, it'll be interesting to see how this pandemic is going to affect those uh, differences now, um, because some of us are uh, now with chronic health issues, 
uh, from having had COVID. Um, so there is definitely uh, a change in the future, but we don't know as of yet what that will be. Um, <clears throat> the aging environment of the entire world uh, will require even more healthcare practitioners. So we need nurses and nurse practitioners and physicians more than ever. Now, um, our growth and development is all interconnected. So if you have an economically stable environment, you tend to eat healthier foods, which tend to be more expensive, all right? Um, how is the healthcare in the environment that you live in? What is the social and community context uh, in, in terms of where you are living? And the educational level that, that uh, people have will determine the health and prosperity and nutritional um, outcomes of individuals in a population. So um, for the first time in US history, Older adults are projected to outnumber children by the year 2035. So that is a huge change. So um, with that said, I think understanding the requirements and the nutritional needs of elderly people is super important to um, grasp that knowledge and apply that knowledge in your future. So taking this nutrition course is super applicable, not only personally for your own health and your family's health, but also for your future patients that probably will be elderly. So the continuing um, human growth and development uh, process from young adult to middle age to elderly is something that never uh, stops. Like growth hormone is something that is released throughout your life to maintain bone health, to maintain muscle tissue uh, and fat. So um, physical growth obviously stops once you've reached maturity. So after physical maturity is established, your energy requirements will diminish. So at that point, the nutritional requirements will change as well. Young adults will become increasingly independent, so we have to give them a baseline um, educational um, system for them to understand how important the nutritional intake is. And if, the, if it's not received through diet, that supplementation is also a necessity, especially if, for example, young females have heavy periods with dysmenorrhea, for example, they need to realize that they may have some issues with iron deficiency. Uh, Middle-aged people will tend to focus more on weight management or personal growth and health um, to maintain their health. And then older adults will just be trying to avoid disease. So their nutritional needs will be based on how do I get the particular supplements to prevent a disease? So like vitamin D deficiency and calcium deficiency, osteoporosis, right? Or iron deficiency or all these other things that we need to make sure. Vitamin B12 is, is a deficiency that's very common in older adults. So these are the things that need to be addressed. If it can't be addressed with a particular diet, then it needs to also be addressed in terms of adding supplementation. So um, the socioeconomic status, as I mentioned earlier, um, whether you are a young adult who is struggling, college student and three jobs and trying to make it through the day, really is gonna eat a lot of fast food. Definitely the nutritional value of their food might go down. Elderly may suffer from uh, uh, financial hardship, loneliness, uncertainty, and even depression which may diminish their appetite, which then results in uh, vitamin deficiency and mineral deficiency. We have an increased uh, retirement um, community. Um, so the retirement age adults are um, now realizing that their retirement is not enough to survive. So they go back to the workforce 
And that also affects their ability for meal planning and maybe even their ability to uh, purchase healthy fruits and vegetables. Um, so the aging process um, is not something that is an easy um, pill to swallow because there are multiple aspects to it and not just, well, it's easy, just get the right foods in you and everything will be hunky-dory, but it doesn't work that way, especially if there's a socioeconomic impact on the individual. So um, aging is a total life process that involves um, biological um, aspects, nutritional aspects, social, economic, psychological, and even spiritual aspects. So someone who is a strict vegan, we need to really educate them on perhaps they might need B12 shots or perhaps they need supplementation with iron, things like that. Um, so again, nutritional requirements along with um, the progressive physiological changes that are degrading in the body are going to alter what people think that they were eating before as healthy is now no longer a valid thing and they may need to tweak their diet just to keep up with the aging body. So um, as we age, our metabolism slows down. The hormones um, also become an issue. The hormones drop, whether it's a male or female. In females, it's estrogen, progesterone, uh, definite drop in postmenopausal and uh, increased stress releases more cortisol and therefore trunkal obesity in menopause, uh, postmenopausal women or menopausal women, I should say. In men, the testosterone levels go down, so their metabolism decreases as well, um, and it affects other aspects of life, including um, various uh, behavioral issues and um, sexuality issues as well with uh, diminished uh, natural hormones. So um, you can do hormone replacement therapy. Uh, bioidentical hormones is one of the ways that we can solve that issue, but we can also do it naturally with diets that improve hormone function. So that is a possibility. And if you can't do it that way, there's even supplementation naturally to improve hormone function and diminish cortisol levels. So um, food patterns, as we age, um, our GI system ages. And what that results in is decreased absorption. So that's how we get a vitamin B12 um, deficiency. We also have decreased uh, taste buds um, and de diminished smell. Um, our thirst mechanism goes down, so we tend to get more dehydrated. The vision diminishes, so we have to focus more on making sure that the individual uh, is taking um, vitamin A. But of course, if you take too much vitamin A, that could be uh, to toxic, so it needs to be a healthy balance. Um, so the individuality of the aging process is the fact that each individual is unique. So somebody that is aging may become hyperglycemic and have that uh, pre-diabetic state and become diabetic. So we need to make sure that we follow the diabetic diet and, you know, reduce uh, carbohydrates. So nutritional needs um, for individuals that are aging the uh, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and fluids all will change as we age, okay? So micronutrients and health concerns, well, as we age, again, um, hormone levels go down, and one of them, and there's a lot of other hormones, but for example, uh, thyroid function goes down, uh, bone health goes down because, um, for example, if calcium levels are high in the blood, then it is the thyroid gland that releases calcitonin. If, uh, th if the blood levels of calcium are low, then it's the parathyroid gland that releases parathyroid hormone, uh, which then mobilizes bone to break down bone so that we increase the calcium levels in the blood all of these hormonal functions will diminish as we age. 
All right. So as someone ages, the main things that, you know, the take home message for an aging individual, and I hate to say that I'm in that category because I'm 53, but um, 50 and up, you want to start thinking about vitamin D deficiency, vitamin B12, diminished um, GI absorption. And you also have to be careful because a lot of uh, individuals who really kind of want to be healthy might overdo it with excess supplementation, and that's not healthy either. All right, so I'm going to skip to the case study because this is supposed to be a micro learning session for you guys, and I don't want to um, make it too long of a session because, you know, it's micro learning and you already have everything you need in that beautiful instructional design that's already there with all the videos and the learning content through Canvas. Um, so uh, I'm just going to kind of give you the highlights of, you know, the aging process and what that entails with respect to nutritional status. All right, so how do we re reduce the risk when someone is aging? Well, um, making sure that each individual gets their own nutritional assessment, checking out their uh, physical activity, what are their levels of physical activity, and take, take an individualized approach. If someone has uh, chronic knee pain and they're waiting for a knee replacement, Perhaps you might have to figure out some other form of exercise, like maybe Pilates or yoga. Um, they can't go on the bike. They can't walk because their knee hurts. So nutritional status also, uh, making sure that it's a healthy balance. And the physical activity, note that as someone ages, you can't overstress their body because then they're releasing cortisol, which then causes more weight retention and a hyperglycemic state and hyperlipidemia. Uh, so that's really bad. So you really don't wanna stress the body too much. So I think physical activity needs, needs to be balanced. So maybe two, three days, if someone's really out of shape, start it twice a week and then work to three days a week, but make sure that an elderly individual has um, recuperation time for physical activity, which is lengthened. Someone in their twenties recuperates within 24 hours somebody like me in their 50s, it takes me two days to recuperate. So I've worked up to four days a week because I'm a Pilates instructor, but typically someone my age should work up to maybe three days a week. All right, now, um, the chronic diseases of aging is an issue where now we have to change the diet. So this low sodium diet for heart disease, hypertension and stroke, um, emphysema is also an issue, diabetes, cancer, arthritis, you wanna do a low inflammatory diet. Um, same thing with asthma, low inflammatory diet. Uh, ketone diet is great for those arthritis and asthma. Um, and then the diet modifications and nutritional support are a huge, part of the global aspect of treatment when it comes to these chronic diseases. Also note that certain medications will affect appetite and GI absorption. And in addition, certain medications will uh, prevent the absorption of certain nutrients. So you need to be cognizant of that. And that's a whole separate course where you understand um, the pharmacological action and the mechanism of action so that you understand the uh, interaction with supplements and, 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 and the nutrients that the individual is taking in. So you should know, for example, everyone knows like broccoli, vitamin K, can't take Coumadin and you can take Coumadin, but you can't eat broccoli because it interferes with the fact that you're taking a blood thinner and, you know, Vitamin K is actually a coagulant, so you don't want to do broccoli. So things like that you should be aware of as you move through more on a deeper level, um, the interactions between drugs and um, the nutrients that we eat, um, the foods and the supplements that we take in. So the clinical needs of the elderly um, are very specific and we have community standards. The government also has a program for older Americans uh, to link them into nutritional services and healthy home delivered meals. The um, 
government programs uh, is sponsored by the US Department of Agriculture. We have research center, we have extension services, we have supplemental nutrient assistance program called SNAP, uh, commodity supplemental food program. We have senior farmers market nutrition program so that it is accessible to everyone of every socioeconomic status. And the outreach division of the US Department of Health and Human Services is um, the scope of reaching out to uh, populations that uh, may or may not get uh, the proper nutrition as they are aging. So there are also uh, societies of healthcare workers. There are also uh, dietitian associations, medical associations, and nursing associations that have um, implemented community groups and uh, uh, community outreach uh, and volunteer organizations to make sure that the elderly are getting their food. Um, and not just getting any food, but food that is nutritious and that it satisfies the nutritional requirements for that age group. All right, so we have uh, independent living facilities that are always uh, making sure that the um, um, nutritional standards are met. We have uh, assisted living facilities and nursing homes. And so we typically have dietitians on staff so that um, each elderly um, individual based on their medical history and their age can get what they need, uh, especially if they have a specific chronic disease. All right, so I do hope that this was uh, interesting to you. And I might have one more video um, on pregnancy because that's a special group. If I have time, I'll do it later this week. And uh, have fun this week um, seeing each other's videos and uh, responding on the discussion board. And um, only two weeks left. And if you have any questions, you know where to go. Find me in Canvas inbox. Bye.